Our first, um, hello. Our first presentation today is by um, somebody I'm really delighted to have at Faculty Academy this year, with our new university librarian, um, Rosemary Arneson. And um, those of you who don't know, lightning slides are timed presentations. It's a PowerPoint presentation. The uh, slides have to automatically advance, so the pressure is on. Please give her your undivided attention. Thanks, and welcome to lunch with the library. We, tend to, we seem to have taken over the um, lightning slides presentation. So. What I'm going to talk about is an idea that's been kind of coming to me slowly as I think about a lot of different issues, but mostly is can the library be used as a textbook for some courses? When Jeff and the search committee hired me before they started the search process, they did a, a survey of faculty and staff and asked, what do you want in this new creature, the university librarian? That's what they said. Um, one of the issues that we know about is that students have a certain definition of research. It starts with Google and ends with Wikipedia. We call that lacking core information literacy. We did an um, informal survey of students this summer and asked them, or this spring, asked them why they come to the library. Yes, sex is up there, um, but it's a, a lot about quiet and study. Faculty, on, on the other hand, have differing perspectives of the library from, you mean we have one, to they're great but underappreciated, which we really appreciate hearing. From our perspective, we've got a lot of good stuff, including some really, really good people who are ready to help. And we really would like to be more than a study hall and hookup locale. <laughs> so Rosemary's latest wacky idea, what if we find a way and even pay you to work with us to help create better assignments for your students? So what I'm thinking about is this grant process. This is an idea I've not run by. It's debuting here. Um, it's public debut. I've not run it by upper administration. No ideas are original, especially mine. I'm copying it from a lot of other institutions. These all have different variations on, on the process. OK, you can advance now. Um, some examples of possible projects. These were ones that came to me, what I've seen in the last day and a half. You've got much better ideas than I will ever have about what, how the library and you and I can work together. This is a site that um, Steve actually um, forwarded to me, or it was in a blog he for forwarded to me. A professor at Lewis and Clark College, spider expert, she and her biology 101 students made this research source on the spiders of Lewis and Clark College, including mapping where they are. If you're like me, you're going, I'm not going there. <laughs> so, um, a librarian and a history professor at Cleveland State Community College work together having students in a fairly introductory history class scanning and creating the metadata for some archival resources at different, um, different local history collections around the area and putting them into the Southeast Tennessee Digital Archive. Um, this is about a, a slide about a jailbreak. So my question is, is this an idea worth pursuing? Does my idea have wings? And if you think it does, who wants to help me make it fly? That's going to be the next slide. It'll come along. And if you would be interested in working with me on this, that's my email. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you. <laughs> 
Um, we have one more lightning slides also from our colleagues in the library. I'm happy to introduce. Now, Paul, I don't know you're actually presenting, but he did help put this together. Donna Hudgen and Carolyn Parsons are now going to be presenting digital projects at UMW Libraries. You just press okay. from beginning. Okay. Welcome to the Price is Right. Oh, no. Do I? Here. It's, it's a shiny way. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We invite you to come on down as we share a fu uh, future and past library digitization projects, which are a direct result of several uh, very important partnerships. Why digitize? We want the entire campus community and others to have access to all of our UMW publications, which are very important. Alumni can look up classmates and former professors and other older activities. Researchers can access without working around library hours and plotting through tedious microfilm. Advancement in university relations can view alumni information for clear understanding of who and where our alumni are and create the potential for increased donations. Digitizing allows us to preserve original issues because so many are fragile at this point. We soon can add these new digital projects to our UMW digital archive and we can acquire data about our users. That's very important. Um, publications that we have already digitized are full text searchable, which is crucial, portable, they can be found anywhere, and they can convey to an assortment of accessible modes, PDF, EPUB, Kindle, and plain text. With our partner, Lyricist, we can digitize bound or loose materials or even microfilm format. Pricing is based on the size of the items and the number of pages, with an average price being 10 to 15 cents per page, which we think is pretty good. With certain size restrictions of loose material, some, like the UMW magazine, must be bound before scanning can occur. All digitized materials must be in the public domain or have copyright holders' permission. And you might want to know who are our partners. Well, our initial drive stems from our staff's ability to understand what others need and to realize what we're not providing sufficiently. Um, our main partner is Lyricist, and that's the nation's largest regional nonprofit membership organization serving libraries. Also, Creekside Digital, um, which works with microfilm format, and Internet Archive provides a scanning. These are other institutions that you see who have used Lyricist, and they've used them for um, putting up uh, travel writings, diaries, rare books, alumni magazines, student literary magazines, etc. And the first publication that we had digitized was the battlefield. Um, we obtained uh, permission from our business office, um, the copyright was sent, and after reaching a cost estimate, conducting conference calls and emails and deciding on a payment plan, we sent all this metadata to Lyricist. Volumes were packed and shipped, images were reviewed satisfactorily. And then after we'd done one, we knew we wanted to do another one, and so we did the OBOD, which is a student publication. And we felt that projecting the student magazine would showcase previous student work while at the same time encouraging future student endeavors. And the English Linguistics and Communications Department um, offset all of this. They, com they funded it completely, and we're excited about that. Okay, um, our next publication in the digitization queue is the UMW Alumni Magazine. Very rich in history, begun in 1939. Um, we're excited. We just got confirmation this month that we can partner with the Office of Advancement <coughs> excuse me, and University Relations, so this project will be a go. The bullet will follow, we hope. This is a publication the library gets asked a lot about. And the bullet will be our first digitization project from microfilm. So we'll have to work with a different vendor. We're going to work with Creekside Digital on the bullet. And we'll also have some issues regarding segmentation. And here, with working with the Department of Theater and Dance posters, this is a project that just got stopped in its tracks back in 2009 when I likened to the library kind of fell under the shadow of Mordor with our budget cuts and our position freezes. I think a lot of you fell under that same shadow. But that collection will be going live this fall and accessible online. 
Um, we're also getting the chance to revisit our very first digital attempt, the UMW Digital Archives, which was funded by the Centennial Committee back in 2008. It's a collection of historic photographs across campus and then a subset of James Farmer images, which have really proven very important during this last year with the Freedom Riders. So how do you access the recent digital material uh, via the Internet Archive for right now? Um, our goal in the future is to migrate those records over into our own digital repository, but Internet Archive has allowed us to push forward with some of these digitization projects. So in Price is Right fashion, you know, come on down, join us. Who is next to be the partner? Um, all of these projects really could not have been successful without a partnership. As Donna mentioned, the OBAD, we had funding from the ELS department. The drama posters, they were students that came in and did all the scanning and the metadata entry. And we're hoping with the alumni magazine, looks like we'll get funding from the Office of Advancement. So any partnership, we need those external partners. And also, I'd like to say it's been a very internal partnership, too. Um, Donna takes the lead on the communication aspects. She's communicated with the vendors and um, also with the outside partners. Paul, he's kind of been the Sam that led us out of Mordor. He's been the technical back end that we really needed. And then I do a lot of the content inventory and getting the content creation. So if you have some questions on what we're doing afterwards, you know, feel free to stop by and see one of us. Thank you for lunch with the library. Um, so next up on our agenda is going to be a presentation that is completely unprepared uh, by Jim and myself about this class that we've been teaching. Do you want to come up? Um, so this is going to be kind of informal. We'll be showing you some stuff and hopefully there'll be some time for discussion as well. Where are we starting? Yeah. Can we use both mics, Andy, or is that too hard? Can I use the podium and him use that? He, sure. Okay. Good. Okay. Hello? Take a minute. Just give it a second. Is everybody in? Is everybody in? DS-106 is about to begin. Okay. It's my best, Morrison. What is DS-106? Uh, DS-106 is awesome. Let me start with that. And then let me move from that. DS-106 is a class that was started by Jennifer Pollack. Uh, I remember that I helped her teach the first summer class of it, and it's a digital storytelling class um, in the computer science program. And I'd just like to thank the computer science program officially for letting DTLT experiment with this class and being so open-ended. They may want to stop the class after this presentation, <laughs> but still, everything they've given us up to this point has been really appreciated. Um, what DS-106 is, is it's an experiment in thinking about a class where we ask the students to frame their narrative on their own space in their own way. Every student who comes into this class gets their own web hosting space, their own domain. And for us, the digital story is about them framing their identity out in the open. I send an email to every student saying, this is going to be an open class. Prepare yourself. If that doesn't work, drop it. But what they do is through a course of study, they frame a series of different media, whether it be audio, video, design, visual, um, mashups, uh, fan fiction. They go through a series of assignments. Now, this semester was different. We've taught it two different semesters, both in the fall of 2010 and the spring of 2010. This semester, we decided, OK, we have these students. I was able this semester to team teach with Martha, which has been an amazing process. Hopefully, we could talk about that. Um, but we decided, you know what? Thanks to Tom Woodward, Alan Levine, Tom Woodward, who's here, Alan Levine, and Martha, we sit and we had a planning in early December. We said, how would we go about this? And the idea came to open the entire course up for anyone who wanted to take it. So we had 75 students between our three sections, but we had another 250 people out in the Ethernet all over the world who were actually contributing to the site and to the course as they saw fit. Give you an interesting example, two members of our audience right now, and actually who are integral parts of this presentation, or not only this presentation, this conference, um, Tom Woodward and Tim Owens actually started us off with a design that Martha's going to talk about, this submit an assignment. We had this 
new idea that Martha programmed beautifully where anyone could submit an assignment that anyone else could do. So Tim Owens, having a background in design, and also Tom, having a background in design, started throwing out these design assignments. A month before the course actually started, we had 200 posts from people all over the world doing animated